Now, when we talk about laws, okay, fine, we know there is civil and criminal. Okay, apart from that also, laws are classified in various like different uh, classifications. Okay, and one of those is substantive and procedural. So what is it? Uh, have you studied it anywhere? Hey, before we continue, I wanted to inform you about my life mentorship program for LLB students or law aspirants. Law subjects and law topics need detailed clarity. We get that with the help of cases, examples and detailed explanation. It's definitely not possible to include everything in these short videos. If you find my videos easy to understand and you are looking for some professional help, in preparing for your examination, you can join my live mentorship program. Here you will be getting exam tips, answer writing skills, detailed notes that you can refer for your examination, cases, examples, and in a very easy way, topics will be explained. I have live classes going on for a lot of subjects as of now. To know more about it, you can drop me a message on this WhatsApp number. I'm also helping a lot of students in writing their assignments. If you need any such help or for any queries, any suggestions, you can drop me a message on this WhatsApp number. And now let's continue with our video. No, ma'am, I have not. No. Can you tell me what is the difference between CRPC and IPC? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, IPC are basic. It basically tells what the crime, like in what section the crime is and all. And in um, CRPC, it it basically tells how the procedure of the court will take place. For example, starts with the prison, uh, presenting the criminal in front of magistrate and within 24 hours, etc. takes place in CRPC. Basically, how the proceedings will move forward. Okay. Do you know any civil law? Like IPC is criminal, like that? Any civil legislation? No. Uh, Indian Contact Act. Indian Contact Act. Okay. Anything else? Uh, consumer protection act. Consumer yeah, protection. And... Okay. Can you tell me the difference between consumer protection act and CPC? Uh yes, ma'am. CPC like CRPC tells how the court will proceed, and in consumer protection act, basically it tells about the wrong. Hmm. What is done? What are the duties that are being being breached? Hmm. Yes, correct. So whatever you explained now, that is only nothing but substantive and procedural. Okay, just that you are not knowing the words, but you know what is the difference. Okay, so what is it? Law may be divided in two broad classifications: substantive and procedural law. Substantive law establishes rights, duties, liabilities of individuals. You already mentioned all of this, right? That Consumer Protection mm -hmm. Act tells about rights, what are the duties of the service provider, it establishes liabilities and all that. Same way as IPC also imposes liability on us that if we are members of a certain society, we need to, uh, you know, like behave ourselves. We should not be causing harm, loss to another person. Procedural law establishes methods, practices, and ways how the functions or proceeding of the court would go on. Substantive law consists of written statutory rules which are passed by legislation which will govern how we should behave, but uh, and also talk, talk about our rights and obligations. Then, what is procedural law? It is nothing but how the court would function, what all would be the different steps, after which step which one would come, what is the process, what are the things that we need to follow, all those things will be mentioned. So, determining what facts constitute a crime is a matter of substantive law. Like if I have caused harm to another person, I have caused injury to another person, what kind of crime it is, what is the punishment. That part, substantive law would explain and which court we would go, how we would go, what would be the different steps, that is nothing but procedural law will tell us those parts. Okay, when we talk about the differences, these are the differences that we have. Substantive part of law, it establishes rights, duties and liabilities. It tells who is having what kind of right and what are our obligations. Procedural law establishes the method, practice and how things would happen in a court. 
if we are filing some application, some notice, etc., it even provides a form that this is how you should write it, right? Everything is given in a proper way. Okay. So substantive law consists of written statutory rules which are passed by the legislature that governs how people behave. It also explains our rights and responsibilities. Procedural law governs the mechanism, how a legal case flows and all the different types of steps which are involved in the case. Okay. Then substantive law determines what facts constitute a crime in a uh, matter of substantive law. Like, uh, have you studied the uh, crime of theft in IPC? Uh, yes, ma'am. So what is theft? Do you remember? Yes, ma'am. Theft is basically uh, uh, move, when we take a movable property of someone, then it's considered as theft. And in, in case when it's immovable, uh, if it's detached from the ground, for example, trees, if it's mm -hmm. detached from the ground, then it turns into a movable property and then also it's considered as theft. Yes. So all those minute details, whether it was movable or not, whether it was taken out of possession or not, whether it was done with a wrongful intention or not. So many things are there, right? All those details, substantive law would tell us that these are the things you do, which should constitute a certain type of crime. Okay. okay, but when we talk about procedural law, it deals with uh, completely with the matters inside the court. What would happen inside the court? Procedural law tells us that. Substantive law tells us mostly what happens outside the court. If theft is happening or any other type of crime, mostly it is happening outside the court. So once something is something has happened inside the court, how functions would happen, both the things are given in two different types of uh, legislations. Okay. When we talk about examples, we have Indian Contract Act, like you already mentioned. We have Indian Penal Code. We have Income Tax Act. We have Karnataka Police Act. Like that, there are a bunch of uh, central legislations passed by Parliament. Plus, there are also a uh, lot many legislations which are passed by uh, different states' legislature also, like Karnataka Police Act. That right? all these are nothing but state legislation. So we have examples for that. Same ways okay. when we talk about procedural law, we have civil procedure code, we have criminal procedure code. Any other example? Mm, um, arbitration act. Is it? Arbitration also it tells, see, sometimes it might happen that there is one legislation which tells both the things. Okay, it tells that yes, okay, you have a right for ADR and plus it also mentions how ADR would happen. So some are like okay. mixture of both. But okay. yeah, good example. ADR is a combination of both the things we get to see in it. Same ways we have limitation act. Yes, okay. ma'am, you can. Right? Limitation act we have we have evidence act also. How evidences would be given in the court, what kind of evidences can be given, what cannot be given. Right? All these are again nothing but procedural laws, it tells us the process. We have court fees and different types of uh, legislations we are having for procedural as well. Okay. Yeah, so both these two types of laws are necessary. Both these combined together would ensure that the things happen smoothly in the court. It's not just that rights are given, but it also mentions like a proper process. If rights are violated, how can we actually proceed? Uh, for it, everything will be mentioned. Okay. Yeah. This is clear, right? You already knew the difference yes. in everything. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just didn't know the term. Yeah, correct. You did not know the term. 